We had just spent an amazing week in Hawaii with our friends Paulina and Jeffrey. We helped document and immortalize their exchange of wedding vows and had some great time adventuring with them. And then we had a few days to ourselves to explore and film more around the island. Now we had to hit the ground running back in Cape Cod. We had one week to fix up the bus, move back in, and hope she would crank up after six long months without being turned on a single time. We were about to find out. We just got back from Hawaii this morning, and we have a lot of things to do. The first thing that is in my to-do list is to replace one of our solar panels. I had a little bit of an accident when we were in Baja last year when I was adjusting the position on one of the solar panels. Uh, one of them broke. So we ordered a replacement and I need to do this before we get back on the road. The reason we have a lot of things to do is because in about a week we're getting back on the road. Cora has a lot of things to do inside the bus. I have a lot of things to do outside the bus. show you right here the solar panel that needs to be replaced it's the one here in the middle in the front as you can see it cracked it's been working just fine but I don't want to keep using this broken solar panel even though they're still working perfectly so that's what happened there I was using a range and uh, hit it from underneath when I was tightening these things up and it just broke and it shattered the whole thing so right so it's time to change the solar panel well say Luis is up on the roof you kind of hear him a little bit and my job now is to get the bus cleaned up and ready to move back in because as he said, yeah, we have about a week and then we are hitting the road. So we have to transition back to bus life. And um, we also have some other actual creative work and things to do at the same time. So we hit the ground running. We haven't really slept in a while because of the flight. And I think in our bodies, it's like a lot later at night right now. But we got here and we just got some coffee and we're ready to crank it out because there's no time to waste. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually clear out the garage and uh, get the stuff out of there so that when we put everything back in, we do it in a pretty organized manner. So, wish me luck. I bet when I said I had to clean out the garage, some of you thought I meant the garage of Scraggy House. Nope, I meant this. We call this the garage. It is a two by eight foot space in the back of the bus where we keep all sorts of goodies tools, mural supplies, the generator. All the electrical is back here too, including our entire solar setup and lithium battery bank from Expert Power. So the garage is all emptied out, and all cleaned out, and it is ready for all the stuff to be reorganized and put back in place. I just finished the garage, that's all set. Now I'm gonna get working on the studio. I'm gonna kinda of do the same thing. I'm just gonna pull everything out of the cubbies and the closets and the drawers and kinda of just put it on the floor here so that I can clean everything out and wipe it all down. And then when we put our stuff back in, we can put it in intentionally and kinda of feel like a reboot because who doesn't like a reboot? You know how it is. It's nice to start completely fresh. It feels good to move into a clean, organized space. All right, the studio is done and ready for our stuff to come back in and be organized in place. Meanwhile, up top, I was working on replacing the broken panel. As you might remember, we started out with five panels. A year later, we completely overhauled our solar setup. This included an expansion to 10 panels, totaling 1,000 watts in solar panels. 
Of course, the actual wattage varies by the day and by the angle of the sun. Still, it's way better than what we had before. All panels up. Now that I removed the old panel, it's time to install the new one. I have to drill the holes where the L brackets uh, are going to hold this solar panel. So I have to drill two holes on each side and then we'll be ready to be installed. So it should be easy. As long as we have decent sun, this solar array and our awesome battery bank can power every need we have in the bus. All right, it's time to drill the holes. The new solar panel was successfully installed. I'm gonna have to change this bolt to a stainless steel and also get a, a butterfly nut that is also stainless steel so it doesn't keep rusting. And I also wanna have to change this ones. But for now, I'm done up here. Okay, today is day two of cleaning up the bus and getting her ready for us to move back in and hit the road on the way to Alaska. So my goal today is to get her completely cleaned up and to at least get myself all moved in. Jose Luis, he's working on some other stuff, getting uh, filters and stuff ready for Bobby's next oil change before she hits a big long trip. So he might not be able to get all his stuff moved in here today, but I certainly am hoping to. Wish me luck. Isn't it crazy how you don't feel like you have a lot of stuff until you have to move it? And then all of a sudden, all your things just start filling boxes and bags, and you start thinking, did I ever need all this? Do I still need all of this? But then the moment you try and get rid of anything, it's nearly impossible to. It's just a very interesting thing, the relationship we have with our stuff. That's kind of why I like these chances we've had to step out of the bus, because bringing everything back in has provided an amazing opportunity to do that sifting process. Cora's been working really hard cleaning the bus, getting it ready for the road. We're gonna be back on the road in four days. And also I have a lot of things to do to help Cora get this bus ready for the road. And one of them is making sure that the fridge is running Perfectly, I'm about to turn it on, so I gotta go outside of the bus, uh, turn the gas on, and then come back inside and turn the fridge on. I have to turn it on a few days before we go because it's an absorption fridge and it takes a few days for it to, to actually get to the operating temperature. And another thing that I have to do is to sanitize the water tanks, especially one of them. It seems like it might have gotten a little bit of algae so I have to clean that up, fill it up, sanitize it with some uh, chlorine and then drain the whole system to make sure that we have very clean water. I will show you now how the place is looking, it's coming together. This is what the bus looks like right now. Uh, Cora has been working really hard cleaning and organizing. We got all the cushions here from the sofa, the covers are being washed. All the things that we got out the bus have been slowly coming back in. All right, so now it's time for me to go back outside, turn the gas on so I can turn the fridge on and start working on the water tank sanitation. This is where we turn the gas on. I'm gonna turn this thing. There you go. Now we got the gas going towards the stove and also towards the refrigerator. Now let's see if the stove turns on. There it is. We're back in business. Perfect. Now it's time to turn on the fridge. All right, we'll check tomorrow or later on today to see how it's going. So here's the water tank that has accumulated a little bit of algae 
along the side wall here. You can see it's really nasty. The only way of cleaning this will be on mounting this, remove all, all the hoses, bring this down, take it out and figure out a way to scrub it inside. I don't know if you can see there, looks nasty. And this hose right here also has some gunk in there that it looks nasty. I need to clean that. I looked on our second tank and everything looks good with that one. So that's good news. All right, so I'm gonna get my tools ready to remove this tank. Ah, it's been really cold, so I think I'm gonna have to heat up these hoses so that they pop out easier. I think the best way will be to maybe get a blow dryer or pour some boiling water to soften it. And that way it will be easier to remove it. So I'm gonna go try that. All right, so I got my boiling hot water right here. And now we'll see. This helps loosen up these hoses. I removed everything. Look how nasty this is. There's a lot of gunk in there that needs to be removed. Ah. And that's the inside of our water tank. This is the ones that get a little more sunlight, so that's why we get algae. I'm gonna make sure this time to keep it sanitized with some chlorine to prevent the algae from coming back. If you're worried about us drinking that water, well, actually all the water for drinking goes through a bypass and then through a filtration system. But still, it was time to clean out that tank. Ew. If you can see here, this scrubbing helps a little bit. Yeah, I can be able to get all of it. It is to get most of it out. Can you see here? This was completely filled with algae. It looked just like this and now I was able to remove at least a little yeah. bit of that. this pressure washer in the shed in the back of the house uh, I'm gonna try it hopefully I can remove most of the algae with this let's give it a try another thing we reflected on is the fact that since our tanks are clear we think this helped in the algae formation we spent a good two years in almost exclusively warm places combine that with clear tanks that allow sunlight to enter and you kind of have the ingredients to start your own algae factory even with the filtration system we use, we put on the hose when we fill our tanks. Jill, your pressure washer saved our butts on this one. Thank you. If we hadn't been able to use that, we don't know how we could have gotten this tank clean. All right, we have a clean water tank. All the algae is removed. Now it's ready to be put back, add some bleach with water, and flush it a couple of times. Uh, all right, it's time to put the tank back, back in the bus. Cora's gonna help me. Well, that was quite an odyssey. We're grateful we had the time and space to take care of that important job. I really enjoy working on the bus utility system with my own hands. When you know your own system, you can better deal with problems when they arise. Before I did all the plumbing in the bus, I was very overwhelmed about it. But once I wrapped my head around it, it was easy peasy. So I'm very proud of the work I did. 
Now on my side of things, I was ready to start moving stuff back into the Bobby garage. Those white cloth panels I'm reinstalling are blackout panels I sewed during the bus conversion. They keep the garage from overheating in hot places, and they actually do an amazing job. After filling the tank with water and some chlorine, we flush the whole system from the fresh water tanks to the great water tank to clear out and disinfect the entire system. And I continued with the work of moving stuff back into the bus. This was such a cathartic experience. I love organizing things. It, it makes me feel calm and centered. I feel like everyone should go through this process every two years or so. Just move everything out of the house, get rid of what you never really use, and then bring it back in very intentionally. I guess that's the idea behind garage sales. Not having our own yard, we can't really do that. But we do enjoy ending up with a couple bags for Goodwill. I got so into the letting go, sorting, and reorganizing game that it extended to the bins we keep in the bus garage. And then I fixed one of the plates I inherited from my grandpa. It was the victim of a speed bump in Baja, Mexico, I believe. Have we ever told you the story behind our awesome custom cushions? Well, in the height of the bus conversion, I had the idea to see, just to see, if we could find a company that would be willing to sponsor the cushions for the Art With Area bus. I typed custom cushions into Google and then just started calling every single company that came up. They were all over the map, California, Texas, New York, Arizona. I just called everyone and I only got one yes from outdoorfabrics.com and it was a yes right away. Tracy answered the phone, I introduced myself, explained what the project was about, and immediately she responded, that is just so awesome. Yes, we'd love to do some cushions for you guys. And guess where that company was located? Out of all the companies I had reached out to across the country, Miami, 45 minutes away from us. So yes, Tracy and the team at outdoorfabrics.com, super awesome people and super awesome company. Even living in 200 square feet of space, we often feel like we have so much stuff. So I also took advantage of this opportunity to go through all my things and to reorganize everything as it went back into my drawers. It is a really centering process. Here I am installing my photo and video editing monitor. This is where I spend most of my time while working in the bus. The next day we just kept at it. How do we have this much stuff? when we live in a space so small, it still baffles us. We got another little project here, and that is to stain the deck. I got my sealer, bucket, and a brush. So I should be able to finish this before it gets dark, because in four days, this deck needs to be ready for us to enjoy it while we stop along the way on our way to Alaska. All right, let's start right here. The last time I did this process was in Van Horn, Texas, right after the pandemic hit. Since then, oh man, this bus has seen some places all with a lot of sun. The American Southwest, then the entire Baja Peninsula, then back to the Southwest, and then across the country to the Midwest, and then on to here. There's a few things that never got done in the bus, and there's actually two of them that I can think of right now. One is the door entrance to the studio, and the other one is what's behind the bed. So Cora's gonna help me right now, and I'll show you what I mean. So this wall right here never got finished. Uh, my idea was to cover it with canvas and make a painting. I'm not gonna have the time to work on the painting, but at least before we get back on the road, I would like to have the canvas installed and paint later. Anyway, this is something that you only see it when the bed is down. That's usually when you're sleeping. This is basically an art piece for us. Because the canvas right here, 
and I believe we've got all the tools we need, so let's get to it. This ended up being quite a pain in the butt, way more than we anticipated. But ain't that like most things in life? If you've ever tried stretching canvas over a frame, you know how difficult it is. This was a task to stretch a canvas over a flat wall, which wouldn't have been as bad of a thing if we had easier access to the bottom edge of the canvas, which we didn't. <laughs> all in all, all I can tell you is this was quite a process, but we did it. We installed the canvas. Now, the only thing that is left to do is the molding. As you can see here, the canvas doesn't reach us all the way to to the end over here, but it's molding. It's gonna be stained. It's gonna go over it like this. So it should go like so. And it's gonna look like a beautifully framed canvas. So I had enough time to stain the molding, but unfortunately, I didn't have the time to install it. So that is one project that still has to be finished. Now the trick is getting everybody to fit because everybody's just growing like gangbusters. Having this little garden brings me so much joy and it brings so much life into the bus. There's a fair bit of turnover though. Some plants just don't make it. With us constantly on the move, some plants just can't handle all the constant changing between different environments. And also, it's kind of like life. You just can't keep everyone happy. Some of our plants loved Baja, others died there. Some of those that thrived in the desert didn't really like the Midwest so much. The ones who seem to be the troopers though, the true bus lifers, are the succulents. Beautiful, the garden is back. So one other thing I wanted to show you was a special part about our time here at Scraggy House and on Scraggy Neck. And that for me was my, my walks. So not every day, but I tried to go as much as I could out to go on these little me time walks around the island. And I'm gonna lead you today with me on, uh, on one of those walks with me. So I hope you enjoy it. This is a really, really beautiful part of the world. So imagine you're putting in your earbuds, pressing play on your very own Me Time playlist, and joining me on a walk around peaceful Scraggy Neck. I have been out here on dreary days, on sunny days, on snow-covered, ice-covered days. Today is a little bit chilly, but spring is in the air and couldn't ask for a more beautiful place to take a walk and be alone with my thoughts. These trees here were beautiful after those big snowstorms. They were just plastered in snow. It was so pretty. And the thing I think is very beautiful about this is that everybody can have time like this. No matter where we live in the world, we can take a little bit of time to go and walk by ourselves and just try and see beauty in the little things around us.
love that spot. It's been a good place to commune with for a little while. Good place to kind of talk to Mama Earth. I really enjoy sunset walks. The world is just so peaceful at this point in time. makes you think of the lakes of, of northern Wisconsin and Minnesota. It's so calm. And with that, I head back to Scraggy House to keep working away. I'm about to start Bobby for the first time in almost six months. But before I do that, I'm going to install this new eyes we got for Bobby. So we got this new LED lights for Bobby. Because the lights the, the bus has currently on, they're really terrible. So I'm really excited to install this one. Oh, look at this. It's gonna be so nice to have bright lights. He wasn't lying. Those headlights were pretty terrible. They basically didn't do anything at night. Now, we don't like night driving in general and try to avoid it if at all possible. Let's see what's the difference between the old lights and the new lights. Oh wow, so much brighter. Yeah. I will do another test tonight just to see how bright these lights are. But for now, I'm going to change the other one. The few times we found ourselves driving at night, it felt pretty unsafe. So this was an update we had been talking about for a while, and really grateful it finally happened. I'm nervous. <laughs> Will it start? Uh, as you all know by now, Bobby has been hibernating for almost six months. We haven't turned it on, not a single time. It's a moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. You gotta let me do this. All right, come on, Bobby, let's go. <laughs> like nothing. Oh my gosh, so much, so much anticipation. <laughs> ready? And so ends our time here at Scraggy, at Scraggy House. It was such a great time. Scraggy House was really great to us. But now yeah. it's time to move on and start heading north to Alaska. This has been an amazing time. We got so much done. We got our feet kind of underneath us after falling forward for two years. And, mm -hmm. and Jill and Ron just bestowed us with an amazing gift that we really needed right at that time. So this is the beauty of people and the beauty of humanity yeah, right here, how we, how we do these things for one another. And now it's time to try and make it to Alaska. Oh. <laughs> yep, here we go. All right, let's go. <laughs> Six months earlier, we had crossed onto this causeway in our big, beautiful bus, desperately needing a place to land and hunker into work and just disappear for a little while.
peaceful Scraggy Neck ended up being the perfect place to do just that. A quiet, quaint little corner of the world surrounded by natural beauty and the grounding waters of the Atlantic. Cape Cod, bustling and busy in the summer, calm and quiet in the winter. We were so grateful to call this land home, even if just for a little while. We were inspired by its beauty and loved being a part of this landscape during our winter escape. And Scraggy House, the home that just opened its arms and took us right in. And finally, to Jill and Ron. Your example truly deeply impacted us and changed us more than you know. Your trust and generosity in allowing a pair of nomadic artists to rest up in your home, it's more than humbling. It's a true testament to how good the world would be if we all held such trust and kindness for one another. So thank you so much. But there was still one final thing to do. So I am still back at the house. I'll say is with Bobby the bus. He's out getting an oil change before the big trip up north. I stay behind to get Scraggy House back in order, just nice and polished and cleaned and ready for Jill to come back to her summer space. And I just did a little project. I put some petunias and pansies and thyme into the window box. It's nice to get my hands in the dirt. And now I'm gonna put in some lemon balm and more pansies and petunias just to kind of line the box here. You can see she's already got some chives coming up. And it's finished! We have pansies, petunias, lining the box. So when those get big, they'll just create like this little wall of color. And then there's the lemon balm. Yay! Okay, it's the end of our time here at Scraggy House. It's kind of surreal gonna miss it here. This has been such an amazing experience. And Jose and I put together um, a cornucopia of, of thank you gifts to, to Jill and Ron. And here, I'll show you what we put together. So this is what we put together to thank them for their amazing generosity. You have a print from Jose Luis and just a whole basket of, of fun stuff. These are earrings made out of my guitar strings, sourdough starter, um, one of those spoon holder things that we got that when we went to Spain, some chile morita from Baja, uh, one of my CDs, one of the very last ones in the whole world of Turn the World, our thank you card with a letter that we wrote them, some stickers, and of course, a bus print. And then the big kahuna, of course, is the painting by Jose Luis. That is actually a painting. It's in his style with a little touch of Cape Cod. And we really, really hope that Jill likes this. We think she will. So that is what she will come home to when she, when she comes to Scraggy House. She'll see this explosion of gifts. And then of course we have a couple other gifts spread throughout the house to surprise her here and there. So there's one. She'll get an art there at Pillow. And then here's another, I'm gonna show you. Another one, who knows when they'll spot this one. You have a bottle of Flor de Caña, the 18 year. This is a really, 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 really good rum. That is from Nicaragua. This is one of the pieces of national pride of the country. And then there's one more little treat here in the freezer I have some nakatamales these are the nakatamales that um, we all made when Araceli and Alvis and Mendel and Bethany and Fabricio were here over New Year's and we hope they enjoy I bet they'll enjoy them this is the final goodbye to Scraggy House even though Scraggy House was home for just six months, it was a home that we filled with a lot of laughter and memories. Dear friends and family shared in this space. Here we welcomed in 2022. 
Here we rested up and got our feet underneath us after a crazy and hectic two years on the road. This part is left blank so that it is a canvas for the little mural artists who might want to add their own little spice to this mural. Time to say goodbye to Scraggy House. What a six months it has been. I'm leaving Scraggy Neck. Driving super slow. Gonna let this guy go past. Bye bye, Scraggy Neck. Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to our channel, send us a comment below, and for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art Leader Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.